the volume of this vo this meeting is being recorded voices <laughs> shattering <laughs> okay um let's get into the pr first because i didn't follow what you guys have been discussing there yesterday so uh he actually found a bug <laughs> okay um so he was right in the fact that uh, like local folders uh, were like even for local provider local folders it was trying to copy over itself but basically so I for see. example if i have uh, i don't know um home projects dev pod mm -hmm. and it's mounted inside the um container mm -hmm. uh it was trying to re-upload, but the problem was it was trying to re-upload over itself. So mm -hmm. that was a problem. Okay. And the fix was actually easy. Uh, you can check in the in the code. It was just an if else if the local source and the <clears throat> uh, uh, it's a local. content folder is the same. Yeah. Keep. And I managed um, okay. to ask them to create end to end test. <laughs> and <laughs> they did. Nice. Uh, so now they are running, and if everything goes well, uh, I will just merge. Great. Um, the second problem, which was the uh, local always win thing, mm -hmm. um, is a separate issue. So I mm -hmm. think we will need to open one. Mm -hmm. And um, it probably will need some work to do because <clears throat> it actually is, uh, it works right now. It, it works okay. Um, if you do local changes, it will overwrite stuff on remote when you rebuild. Mm -hmm. Problem is that stuff, the diff of the remote is not deleted. So if you like add files mm -hmm. in the remote, they are not deleted and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will probably need to uh, review a little bit the logic um, in the tunnel part, probably in the gRPC APIs part. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, I think it's not that high of a priority because it's actually working. So it's like a neat, a neat pick. Yeah. Um, I'd say most people or like the, the recommend way or the way I also recommend it to people <clears throat> is Start iterating on your dev container JSON with a local provider. Yeah. And once you're happy with the result, move to a cloud provider. So exactly. and I don't we think are, the we fixed that issue now with this. Exactly. And and the recreate with the cloud provider that uploads a local repository because I always recommend to use a Git repository, um, like a GitHub path or GitLab path if you do a remote provider and this is really only a problem for people with remote providers uploading a local directory and recreating, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's not a problem in the sense it it works. It's exactly. just that yeah, it's not uh, wipe everything and re-upload. Yeah, it's yeah. just re-upload over existing stuff. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so there might be problems, but yeah. Doesn't I matter. think it's such a low uh, yeah, agree. usage percentage that we, yeah, we, um, we should open an issue on that, but yep. maybe it's low prior. E2E tests, okay. Windows tests still going on, yeah. Um, what can you do? But great, you guys sorted this out, uh, to be yeah. honest. It's, it seems to be really collaborative. Uh, Matt, yeah. I think Matt is his name, right? Yeah. Okay, then let's get to those. <coughs> Any updates on the other issues that we have talked about on Monday? I think there are like three new issues, and the others yep. are Open them. yeah, and the others uh, not really. Um, okay. I wanted to investigate the DigitalOcean one, but I don't have a DigitalOcean account. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd also have to create one for this. Um, Anyway, um, these it three may then... be something to do with the digital ocean, maybe library. We need to update something in the provider. I don't know. <clears throat> um, okay.
Okay, yeah, uh, this is going to be interesting. Mm. Okay, uh, so this is basically oh, just education. Yeah, yeah, we, we need to um, teach them how to use the Dockerless provider so that it's actually built on Kubernetes, but without build kit. Um, yeah, but their problem is, or the way I understand it, um, he's doing devpod build and then doesn't realize how to connect this pre-build to the oh, Kubernetes okay. provider. Because if he specifies a pre-build in his dev container JSON, then he should be able to pull it, um, even though he built it locally with the Docker provider. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm just gonna write a comment here later and hope that's gonna be fine. Um yeah, this I mean this changed. It yeah. With pre-built shouldn't be an issue. Maybe we need to update our docs in the future. Um okay, we've seen this before. Um what happens? Ah, it can be the trading. Yep. Uh... I think the problem here is that they're installing it into um, their home directory applications. Right now, we expect the application to be set up as an admin. Uh, so system wide installation. Uh will I will try to re I I've been looking for this bug for a while now. Um mm -hmm. because it has been reported a couple of times and it may be that it's just in the home uh, slash applications folder that's causing the problems. Um I will try to <clears throat> repro this on my end. Okay, so it's if you install it in slash application, it works. If uh, absolutely, yeah. Home, I mean that's that's how it's installed yeah. by default. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Good. And then the last one. No easy way to see logs after clicking that button. Mm. Mm, I see. Maybe this is not clear enough. Um, yeah, it's just you... a discoverability. Yeah. Um, where... So I think uh, the issue is like when you go back after the build is finished, you can't see the logs, right? No. <clears throat> Actually, you can if yeah. you click on this. Yeah, it's not really. Super... It's not discoverable though. Yeah. Um, you'd have to click on the status. Okay. Uh, uh, but for me, sometimes it used to be that when I click that, uh, it, again, like when I used to click open, there was logs again, but it was uh, new logs, not the previous one. Like if you go and click open once. If I click open here? Yeah. And then go back? The logs kind of, uh, these are the new logs, right? Like it is trying yeah, yeah. to. Yeah, these are the new logs. Yeah, I think that was oh, okay. I got it. Because it, it shows the logs of the app command that you're launching mm -hmm. when you do open. Mm -hmm. It's building some something with open. And you go back mm -hmm. and you click again open. It launches a new open app command. Mm -hmm. So you follow new logs. Yeah. Yeah, I think okay. that is something which I used to have some issues. When I was getting started, it was, it was confusing. Uh, but yeah, probably some we we can put something in the meatball menu. In the three dots uh, menu. I show logs here. It's like follow logs or no something. Basically like the same as if you yeah. click on here. Yeah, that but it's a little different. bit more. Yeah, we can do that. I can do that later. 
Oopsie doopsie, stop sharing. But okay, so basically all three yeah. tickets I have to take a look at. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get it done today. Um maybe only tomorrow. I think it's there both all three pretty low. Yeah, I, I'm gonna get back to the first two and then uh check out the third one. Um and like this should be a I don't know, five minute change anyway. So mm -hmm. yep. Uh, anything else we need to discuss today? I don't think so. I am uh, now reviewing that uh, PR, mm -hmm. following the end-to-end -end, uh, tests. Right. And <clears throat> I will try to investigate a little bit more on the uh, mix and status thing, mm -hmm. um, mainly because I'm not able to <laughs> reproduce it. Um, it sometimes goes into unknown status, mm -hmm. but from what I see is an app image problem. So if mm -hmm. I run it uh, normally, it actually works. Oh, I saw an app image problem in the user Slack yesterday as well. Um... Yeah, it's, um, as I was saying, app image is a pain in the ass. Um, it sure is. <laughs> is the there any is, good Linux packaging format? Yes, uh, the problem is it will need some work on our side. Which one was it again? Flatpak. Flatpak, I see. And there is no automatic auto updater provided by Tori, so we'd have to build this as well. Uh, Flatpak uh, works. It, it's um, mixed. You can make it work in two ways. Uh, the first one, you publish the app on the main uh, store, which is mm -hmm. flathub.org, mm -hmm. and you manage it. It's not like you have a maintainer that you need to ping when you do an update. Mm -hmm. It's you. So when you do a, an update, you update that flat pack, and mm -hmm. people just receive uh, the notification in the store. Okay. You update. It works like the app, app, uh, app store in the macOS. The same. Mm, okay. um, or you have your own Flatpak ref, is called, mm -hmm. uh, which is similar to a repo, but very, very easier. <laughs> uh, okay. In which practically the Flatpak, when you install the Flatpak, it automatically adds that repo to the Flatpak um, package manager. And then you have your yeah. own channel of okay. updates. But yeah. um, the next stuff. Um... But it's something that we can discuss, uh, generally speaking, in uh, a bit. Uh, another potentially useful thing could be Docker image. Mm -hmm. True. But this, I, I mean, yeah, of course. But then this is just a wrap around the CLI anyway. And this doesn't solve our people want the uh, desktop application on Linux problem. Yeah. But yeah, a Docker image like would make sense, of course. <clears throat> it's or something you... that I can investigate a bit uh, for the Flatpak because Flatpak, um, like the macOS apps on the store, mm -hmm. they run in a sandbox. Mm -hmm. They are not like yeah, I remember. So there, there are going to be some punch holes that we will need to do. Yep. Um, which I think we can do. Like the UI itself can easily run in a sandbox. It doesn't need to interact with anything except the mm -hmm. DevPod and right? the custom protocols. Um. Watch with type which type of protocols? Like uh, the ones that we register. Um, the uh, dev part. No, 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 you can do that. You, you can do that with flat packets. You can do that. Okay. Great. Easier. Um, you have to uh, declare that beforehand, obviously. So if we change them, we need to update the yeah. application. But it's yeah. okay. Yeah. And uh, then uh, we can open a little patch hole in the sandbox in which we say, hey, this command, which will be devpod CLI, mm -hmm. it runs unsandboxed on the host. 
Mm -hmm. okay. This way, uh, we don't need to find ways to communicate with Docker or Podman from inside the, the, the because yeah. the CLI is running on the host. Yeah, that would be nice. And I think we I, I can invest some a little bit of time to do a POC. Yeah. yeah. Let's it would be nice to get there, but it's pretty low priority for me to be oh, honest. Yeah. Um, I mean, the app image works. It's not that it doesn't work. It, it has yeah, rough it edges. Sucks. <laughs> yeah, but it sucks. Yeah, uh, it has its rough edges. And generally speaking, uh, the app image is something that it's not that useful in the Linux yeah. land because not many people are yeah. using it. Yeah. But we can we can work on like on yeah. Let's things. revisit, um, as always, with Linux and GUI stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I, I proposed it uh, quite some time ago. But I know. Yeah. Ritik, anything from your point? From... Uh, I just wanted some general discussion about how to build a provider. So I'm sharing my screen a bit. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was this issue lying down for a couple of months right now. So mm -hmm. I decided uh, I will pick this up. Uh, on my free time. So as I understood, so you need to have a YAML and you will need to create commands for those like mm -hmm. using the SDK from the cloud provider, manage authentication locally and then create it, something like that only. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. If a good starting point, um, I feel like is one of the first party um, cloud providers, so GCP or AWS, what we usually do is we have a Go repo um, yeah. and build a CLI in there and then just forward it to this CLI. So you, you can do it uh, either like this, which you, we use the SDK mm -hmm. uh, from, from the cloud provider, and we create mm -hmm. this little CLI that mm -hmm. does the commands that are required, or uh, you can also create like a wrapper provider in which you actually specify in the YAML, in the commands uh, stuff, you actually specify CLI commands. So if you have like mm -hmm. an Oracle CTL, I have no idea if there is some. Yeah, I, <laughs> I also know. If you think like Oracle CTL, mm -hmm. uh, you can create the various command with that. Mm -hmm. And the provider will just be the YAML. Mm -hmm. uh, which will depend obviously on having the CLI correctly set. Um, mm -hmm. It's a very easy and fast okay. way to create providers. And I think there is also a case in which we should also provide some example of this. Because I think, Pascal, one of the things that scares people is that you have to write a Golang something something mm -hmm. provider, which it's not for everyone. Maybe, a, I don't know, a system admin needs a provider and they are not into programming a lot or stuff like that. I think having, um, I think that could help is to have some skeletons uh, providers that people can clone. And mm, then- Yeah, I think we were talking about this when we initially released DevPod. That we want to have example providers like yeah. for because we, bash we, scripts or for have, yeah, bash, trust. OKS, Python, yeah. Golang. Yeah. Yeah. Because That's it's right. pretty much uh whatever, actually. Uh, but yeah, it could improve the adoption from the community because it's a little yeah. bit less overwhelming to just read documentation. They can have like some little example. Or stuff like that. Do we still have a ticket for this? Um, I think so. Um... Okay. So, like for example, if there is something Oracle CTL, so those raw bash commands will go over here, right? Or what is the flow? Do you have any examples? Like for example, if there is an Oracle CTL, something like that, the mm -hmm. bash commands will go over here. Uh... Comment, you just open quotes and slap the comment okay. there. It will run it, that, right? It's, it's pretty straightforward on that point of okay. view. 
<clears throat> and uh, in that common, you can use the environment variables that are given you by the the that pod itself, which I think we have documented. I hope we have documented. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I will look into it. And uh, my end goal is to uh, make a provider by my own, by both the ways, so mm -hmm. we can have some guide or something so that more users can come in who are just new to this thing and so that I can experience the friction points so that new people can come and build those. So I thought this would be a good way to get my hands dirty as well as understand how things are working. Sure. Pretty cool. I'm uh, going to stop the recording.